Recording videos of my style definitely do not have a one-shot-and-done type of piece of software in order to record and get the video going. If you want to actually maintain the actual quality of the video and really strive to actually just make sure everything turns out as good as possible, it takes a collection of different programs. In this case, I have three different recordings programs I even use just for capturing the game. On screen is just an example of all the different programs that I actually use for making the videos themselves, and I'm going to go over them just step by step to show you what I'm doing in the process. It takes more than just software in order to actually get a video put together though. I also have some various hardware that I actually use to just make sure I can get the highest quality video and audio possible too. Such as whenever I'm actually doing voiceover work like this, I actually have the Blue Yeti microphone, which is extremely good, but very expensive, so if you don't find it on a heavy amount of sale like I did, then you might want to go with just the Blue Snowball or something a little less expensive. I also use the Avermedia Live Gamer HD capture card. This is what I use for capturing all of my console footage, as it comes out with very, very nice visuals as well. Much better than the old capture card that I've used for years beforehand. I got this one about a year ago, and it's absolutely beautiful. I use it for streaming all the time as well. And for those of you curious about what controller I actually use, I just use an Xbox 360 controller. They're a lot more durable than the actual PC game pads out there, so after a few of those broke, I just decided to go with this. It's a quarter one, though, because screw wireless. I don't like changing batteries all the time. There are several steps to actually finishing off one of my videos. The first is the most obvious, just record the video itself using either debut, DX Story, or Virtual Dub, depending on which type of game I'm actually recording. The second one is where it gets kind of thrown into a loop, as I had to re-record all the footage using fraps while recording with a Media Player Classic. This is because Pinnacle Studio only really gets good results out of fraps footage for the stuff that I do. But that's where I edit everything for my subtitles and whatnot. And then I compress it using a program called McGlee in order to actually keep the audiovisual quality as high as possible before making the custom thumbnail and uploading it straight to YouTube. It's a bit of a long process, but the quality I find is worth it. Alright, time to get into the actual meat of it all. I'm going to go over each of the recording programs that I use and the situations in which I would use them. The first program, and probably the one that I've been using for the longest now, is the debut video capture software. It's a very lightweight recording program, but it's very good for capturing any game that doesn't use anything like DirectX or whatnot that other programs can capture. So I use this the most often when recording emulator footage in this case. It can be a little finicky to set it to what exact area you want to record, but the quality is very good and it just puts such a low strain on the actual computer that you can record some pretty intensive stuff without worrying about frame loss. This program is pretty much where we placed Camtasia Studio for me, as it puts a lot less strain on the system, so I ended up just going with it overall. I used to use it for everything, but now there's a few things where a new program I found actually works significantly better. The new program in this case is called DX Tori. It's a, pretty much a brand new piece of software for this sort of thing, but it replaces Fraps in my case, as it's used for capturing games that use things like DirectX and OpenGL, as it just latches onto that program and you can adjust the recording settings from there. It's what I use for recording older games like Worms who really need this type of software in order to record them, or for anything that's extremely intensive on the computer already just to play, as this thing uses a very small amount of resources. The good thing is, I can use my own codex with this rather than being stuck with one, like with Fraps. So I can use what's called the Legareth codec in order to actually get the best quality with putting the least strain on my computer. Reducing the strain from your recording is one of the most important aspects of being able to maintain high quality in your video without having to make it look like it's compressed all hell. And finally, we have the program known as Virtual Dub. I actually use this one for recording from my capture card, so for this it'd be my console footage, as opposed to things like emulators and other PC games. With this one, I use it over any other piece of software, as once again, I can record using the codecs that I want, rather than the codecs of the programs limit me to. While my capture card does have its own software, and it does record very well, it forces me to use what's called a lossy codec, and in that case, I'll lose quality when I bring it into the editor and further compress it later on. 
Thus, I can maintain the purest quality with Legareth and get you guys the best looking videos. This one's only brand new, so you'll start seeing the quality difference in my next few videos after this. Another thing to stress when recording from consoles is make sure that you can actually see and hear the console on something else other than the computer when you're recording, as you're going to end up lagging behind on the computer and not be able to play the game properly unless you're using a very good capture card. Now you may notice that I mentioned the Legareth codec quite a bit throughout this. That's because it's a really damn good codec. It's what you like to call a lossless codec, which means the video quality does not suffer whatsoever, while also being a very fast and good compressing codec, so you're going to want to use this for all of your raw footage. Not the final footage, but all of the raw footage. I'll provide the link for you so you can pick it up. It's free. Alright, onto the step that I've been trying a few different ways to try and get rid of. But unfortunately, due to the very few codecs that Pinnacle Studio can actually support well, especially lossless codecs, I still have to go ahead and do this step, even if I don't want to. After a lot of experimenting, perhaps footage just seems to be the most compatible with the editor. So what I actually do is, since I don't want to use Fraps for recording the games itself, I instead record the recording of the game with Fraps. It's a bit of a silly process, but it works out pretty well. I find Media Player Classic to be the best combination to use with Fraps. It's a very low resources media player, so all the videos that I play through it actually come out pretty smoothly. I can sometimes get a lot of frame skipping and other such nonsense with things like Windows Media Player. So this one will ensure that the video quality stays as identical to the original as possible. There will still be the occasional hiccup because of Fraps itself, but it's a lot better than using any other method that i found. With this one, I'll have the Fraps footage ready to go, and I'll be ready to bring it all into Pinnacle Studio while maintaining that original visual quality that I strive for so much. It makes the videos look a whole lot better than what I used to be doing. Alright, so here's where I actually do all my After Effects, such as my text boxes, for example. Pinnacle Studio, I find, is quite a powerful editor for one that's not that difficult to use, while also having all the features I need. The amount of editors that I can use is extremely limited. Pinnacle Studio is the only one I've found that allows me to do the text boxes that I like, with the visuals that I like, while also allowing me to export to a lossless codec, so I can make sure to compress the video properly. I used to use Cyberlink Power Directive, but its exporting issues made it so I wasn't going to use it anymore. Pinnacle's a bit on the unstable side, but it gets the job done. In this case, I'm actually using Pinnacle Studio version 17, a very recent upgrade as I had been using version 15 for a while. Version 17 has gotten rid of that annoying video stuttering that was seen throughout every series in which I started using Pinnacle Studio, and it was getting especially noticeable in Ming Linux 2, thus my determination to try this version to see if it fixes it, and it did, thank goodness. The tool that I make use of for my subtitles in Pinnacle Studio is what's known as the Title Editor. And this program is actually a very powerful tool in which I make full use of to get the subtitles that I want looking the way that I want them. I've created a number of templates that decide what position the text box is going to be in, whether it's at the top or bottom, and the emotion associated with it. This allows me to very rapidly create these subtitles throughout the video, so I can make these really nice looking ones without much worry. I like that I can add the little bit of animation to it as well, such as the slight typing of when the text comes in, and the simple fadeouts. I haven't really found tools like this in very many video editors, and so far PowerDirector and Pinnacle Studio offer the best ones by a significant margin. Once I've gotten all these titles put together, I can do any other editing such as fadeouts, cuts, or speedups, and send the video on out for finished processing, once again sending it to the Legareth codec to maintain that 100% visual quality. Now we finally get into taking the finished edited video and compressing it. The big thing here is I don't want to upload a 20 gigabyte video file to YouTube just to maintain the 100% video quality, and I don't want to store it on my hard drive either. So what we want to use is a program that will compress it as well as possible while maintaining as much quality as possible for both the video and the audio. The best codecs I've found for this are using the X264 codec for visual and the ACE3 codec for audio. Now here's the big thing. Good luck finding a video editor that actually lets you export to both of these. Instead, I have a side program here called Megui, which I can actually throw just about any AVI video at, and it should be able to compress it with these codecs. Now while I could make a whole separate tutorial on how to use this program itself, 
I'm just gonna go over the basics of what I do with it here. Basically, for any AVI video that you bring in, you're gonna use the tool that creates what's called an AVI synth file, and then you're gonna use this to mix with the audio, and you'll be able to encode it with the codecs that I mentioned. The bit rates that I use are 1250 for any 2D video games, whereas I use 1500 for any 3D video games, or just games with 3D graphics in general, like Super New Super Mario Bros. Wii. The end result will be a highly compressed, completed video that will have some absolutely excellent quality to it. It's so much better than what my videos used to look and sound like, and with this, I'm very happy with how they're turning out. While I haven't really had an example video posted yet that uses all the tools in which I've discussed, I'm going to have them very soon, and as a result, it's looking as good as it can at this point. I'm definitely happy with the new capture card as well. It's just a very fantastic quality overall, and I'm hoping it's enjoyed and at least noticed a bit. Overall though, it's definitely going to be keeping this way in the future. We'll see if I get any improvements as time go on, but this is how it is. Next we get to a quite fun part. Thanks to my partnership with the Gaming Network, or TGN as I call them for short, I'm actually able to use custom thumbnails in my videos as with any other YouTube partner. And thanks to what I like to call the, my dynamic duo of artwork, Black Raiden and Neo, I'm able to make these custom thumbnails for each of my videos. How this works is I actually get Raiden to draw a quick line sketch for Neo to actually bring into the computer itself and color for me. And so I'll get what you see in the image here, a nice template that I can use and apply a background to when I need to. As that's the thing, with my thumbnail arts, I like to leave room for adding a background from the video itself, so that way, when you're actually looking at it through the related videos, you still have something in the background that's related to the video. That's rather important to me, as generic thumbnails just don't look anywhere near as good as being able to tell what the video is actually about. Now once I get the completed template from Black Raiden and Neo, what I do is I need to grab a background image from the video itself, which I just grabbed through Media Player Classic since it's able to grab single frames. I then bring that into my image editor and use it as the background image behind the, the template itself. The program I use for this is known as Jazz Paint Shop Pro. The exact version I use is version 9, as versions beyond that got taken over by Corel and it became much harder on your computer. I like that this program is lightweight and fairly easy to use. If you're just doing more basic things like image resizes or little adjustments to templates here and there, this is a much better option than use something fully fledged like Photoshop. What I do is I actually put together a full template with the text ready to go, and all I really have to do is add numbers here and there or change the background image. This makes making a thumbnail for each video the absolute minimal amount of work. It's the best thing to do when you're producing as many videos as I try for, at least. As in this case, you want to decrease how many steps that you're repeating in order to be as the most efficient with it as possible. I definitely like how it's worked out so far, and I'm going to continue using this method unless I can find other improvements. With the custom thumbnail and the video itself completed, all that's left is to upload it all to YouTube. I try to maintain some kind of a schedule, but we all know how this tends to go with me, it only lasts so long. But as a result, I intend to try to make a bit of a backlog of videos, that way if there's anything that comes up that I need to attend to that's going to throw off my usual recording processes, then this will help deal with that at least a little bit. It does allow me to make videos like this too, that I can kind of sneak in between because I have a little bit of extra time. It does take quite a lot of work to maintain that schedule considering I already work six days a week as is, but... I enjoy making these type of videos, so I just do it for the fun. With that, that wraps up the basics of just how I piece my videos together in general. Sure, there's probably a few other steps here and there that I can go into in more detail. Heck, I could probably go into a full-on video tutorial about each and every program that I could use at this point. But this at least gives you some idea of how I, in particular, put these together at least. The things I always strive for with the videos is to just try and keep the visual and audio quality as high as possible, which is why I kept on looking into solutions for things like the little complications that Fraps causes, and of course the stuttering that older versions of Pinnacle seems to have caused. I imagine my workflow and everything in general will improve over time as I discover even more tools and more are released, but for now, these are maintaining pretty high quality videos, so I'm going to keep using it in the future, and hopefully they're all enjoyed. I'm going to go ahead and finish off this video by listing off all the different emulators that I use, just so you'll know exactly which ones I have and you'll know exactly which software I use in order to make all of my videos. 
That way, if you want to replicate the workflow in any fashion, then feel free to go ahead. It gets good quality results, so might as well just stick with what works. Until next time, though, I hope this has been enjoyed, and I'll see you all for my next playthrough, which is quite obvious after showing what's been in this video so far.